Hi everyone, Cynthia with Greenstyle here, and today I'm going to show you how to stitch up the court side dress, both the U back and crossover back. Grab your supplies and let's get started. To make your court side dress, you'll need to cut out the following pieces. The front bodice piece labeled B1 or B6 if you're doing the FBA version. It's essential to mark all of the notches and letters like these two letter A's on the front bodice. You will definitely need these while sewing your dress, so I'll be pointing them all out to you as I show you the pieces. Your front waist yoke will be labeled B2 and you'll also have two notches that you'll want to make sure and cut out, and those are labeled A. You will need two side panel pieces cut as mirror images. Those will be either piece B3, or if you're doing the FBA version, B7. Again, making sure to cut out the notches, there are three notches on each of these pieces, and their letter names are B, D and E. If you're making the U back version, you'll need one back bodice piece labeled B4. Make sure to cut out the two notches on this piece and they are both labeled letter D. If you're making the back crossover version, you'll cut out the two pieces shown here with wrong sides up, and make sure to label the notches with the letter D on both of these pieces. You will need one front skirt piece labeled K1, and that is cut on the fold. There are four notches for this skirt. The two at the top are labeled G, and the two on the side are labeled C. It's very important that you not only cut out the notches, but that you label them as well. On the back skirt, you will cut that on the fold, and that piece is labeled K2. Make sure to label these notches E at the top and C on the sides. For the shelf bra, you will cut out a front shelf bra piece, either piece L1 or L4. Shown here is the FBA version, and you can see that because of the darts at the bottom. Be sure to transfer the plus marks from your pattern piece onto your fabric as those indicate where the dart will end. And also mark and label the two darts on the side with the letter F. For the U back or straight strap version, cut out one back shelf bra piece on the fold and that is piece L2. This piece also has two notches on the side which will be labeled F. If you are making the crossover back version, you will cut two of the back shelf bra piece shown here with wrong side up. You will cut these as mirror images and be sure to include the notch labeled F on your fabric. Use the cutting chart in the tutorial to cut your one inch piece of elastic. It's always a good idea to try this around your body before attaching it to the bra to make sure it's a length that's comfortable for you. To begin construction of your courtside dress, you'll line up the front bodice piece with the front waist yoke piece. Lay them flat, upright on your table, and you can see where they line up at the curve. The two notches on the front and the yoke will line up, and you can check them by making sure that they're both marked with the letter A. Then you'll want to mark the center of the yoke and the center of the front bodice. Then 
you can take your yoke piece and flip it up and on top of the bodice, lining up those center marks. Start pinning at the center mark and then pin at the notches. Then you can pin the rest of the edge. Remember that when you're pinning a curved edge, you'll want to lift up the fabric and pinch it right at the 3 8 inch seam line because that is where the two pieces will line up. Bring your pieces over to your serger or sewing machine and stitch that seam with your serger or stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Here you can see that the A notches are lined up as well as the center line. And just like that, you've already created that beautiful curved seam on the front of your bodice that is so unique to the courtside dress. At this point, you'll want to press that seam upward toward the bodice. And then you can bring your pieces over to the cover stitch machine or you can use your sewing machine with a zigzag stitch or a twin needle. And what you'll do is top stitch that seam down and it'll attach to the top bodice piece. The next step is to attach these side panels to the front piece that you've just created. Lay your pieces out just like so. The B notch will face in toward the bodice. Along the bottom will be the E notch. And then on the side will be the notch labeled D. Flip the side panel onto the bodice piece just like so and begin pinning all the way down that edge. You can begin at the top edge and then that notch will line up with the seam that you've just created on your bodice and then pin the rest of the way. Again, lifting the fabric to pinch and pin right on that 3 8 inch seam line. Stitch these in place using your serger or stretch stitch on your sewing machine and use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you'd like, you can top stitch this seam using your cover stitch or twin needle or zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. First, you'll iron that seam out toward the side panel.
When stitching a single straight line on my cover stitch machine, I like to use a scrap of fabric, usually about one inches long, to start my stitch, and then continue straight onto the fabric without ending the stitch. This will help ensure that my stitches don't fall out before I'm able to enclose it in a seam. Stitch just next to the seam on the side panel side, and you'll be going over the side panel and also the seam underneath. This is an optional step, but it gives your seam a nice flat finish. Repeat for the other side. If you're using the FBA version of the shelf bra, you'll need to first stitch up your darts. Here you can see the plus mark that is transferred over from the pattern piece, and I've drawn a line from the plus mark down to the bottom of the shelf bra. This can be seen on the pattern piece as that highlighted or shaded area around the dart. If you didn't transfer the line, you can simply fold the fabric right along the dart using the plus mark as the point of your fold. Measure exactly 3 eighths of an inch away from the bottom of the dart and then draw a straight line using a ruler to the center point of the plus mark. This will be the stitch line for your dart. Use a straight stitch on your sewing machine and stitch straight onto the fabric and then reverse stitch a few stitches to lock that stitch in. Stitch exactly over the line that you've drawn all the way until you get to the center of the plus mark. Make sure you have the fabric folded correctly and you're going to stitch all the way down the line and then straight off the fabric. Do not back stitch at the point of the dart. Instead, You'll lift your foot and be sure to leave a length of thread that is long enough for you to manipulate into a knot. There you can see that I've stitched exactly on the line that I drew and you can see the opening of the dart right in the center there. Now what you want to do is knot a few knots at the point of the dart. The final step to creating a nice flat dart is to clip open the rest of the way to the point. Be sure you don't snip into any of the stitching, but you want to snip as close to it as possible so that you can press that dart nice and open and create a flat dart on the front of your shelf bra. Continue watching here if you're making the regular U-back or straight strap version. If you're making the crossover back version, skip ahead to the title card that says crossover at around 26 minutes. At this point, we need to pin the front and back bodice shoulder seams together. Lay the front bodice on the table face up, and then lay your back bodice on top of it face down and align those shoulder seams. Pin in place. Do this for both the main front and back bodice and also the shelf bra front and back pieces. Stitch them at your serger or sewing machine using a stretch stitch on your serger or sewing machine. I really like to use the triple straight stitch for this step as opposed to the zigzag or lightning bolt which are both acceptable. I just like how thin, flat, and sturdy the triple straight stitch is for this shoulder seam.
Now we'll pin the neckline of the main and shelf bra bodices. Lay your main piece out on the table like so, facing up. Then take your shelf bra and lay it directly on top so that the necklines are aligned. Begin pinning around the neckline by lining up those shoulder seams, making sure to open up the fabric if you've used a sewing machine. If you used a serger, go ahead and push one seam to one side and the other seam to the other side so that they're not laying on top of each other. Pin all the way around that neck opening. Bring your bodice pieces over to the serger or sewing machine and stitch up that neck opening using your serger or a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. If you'd like, you can add a piece of quarter inch elastic to that seam to give it added stability. Make sure you add the elastic to the main fabric side of the seam, as shown here. And as you attach the elastic, make sure it stays within the seam and doesn't come out into the bodice as I'm showing here. The elastic needs to stay in the seam and it can even hang off the edge just a little bit. Use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine to attach the elastic and do not stretch the elastic as you're attaching it. Just add it at a one to one ratio with the seam. Now let's finish those shoulder straps using the burrito roll method. First thing we need to do is turn the piece right side out so that seam will be enclosed inside the main and the shelf bra pieces. Then begin rolling one side of the top towards yourself as I'm doing here. Just get that strap bit in the middle as rolled up as well as you can, but don't worry if it's not super tight. You can use a pin in the middle here to keep it rolled up tightly, but I don't find that to be necessary. Once you've rolled up to the other side, you're going to take that lining piece and push it underneath and away from you as I'm doing here. Grabbing the lining, lifting the dress and pushing it under and away. So you have the lining facing away from you and the main pieces facing toward you. Now grab the lining and bring it over the bit you just rolled up and match the raw edges of the main and the lining starting with the bottom of the arm opening. Line up the two shoulder seams and pin them together and then line up the other end of the arm opening. You'll see that corner bit there and the corner bit on the main. Line them up and pin them together. 
match up all the rest of the raw edges and pin all the way down. And here you can see the entire section that you've pinned is in the shape of a C. You're not going to be pinning any of the side seams. Head on over to your serger or sewing machine and use a stretch stitch and a 3 8 inch seam allowance to stitch this seam. You really want to be careful that you are only stitching the two layers of fabric together. Use your fingers to push any of that rolled bit away from the stitch line. Here's what your piece will look like after you've completed stitching your first shoulder seam. Reach inside from the front bodice to pull everything right side out. Now you'll want to lay everything out flat again for the second part of your burrito roll. I'll work in the opposite direction this time so you can just see it going down instead of up. So this is the same method but I'm just going a different direction for your point of view. I'm going to roll everything away from me again with the right side of the bodice facing upward and this time I'll reach under to grab that lining and I'll pull it underneath again but this time toward me so I'll still have the lining going underneath and I'll have the main fabric still facing upward. At this point, I have both right sides facing up. I'm going to just neaten up that roll in the middle and get it nice and tight and separated from the main pieces. And then I'm going to bring the liner over the roll and to the main fabric. So now I have both right sides facing each other. And I'm going to pin that entire C curve once again, making sure to line up those shoulder seams and those edges of the underarm seam. And just like before, we'll stitch this seam with the serger or stretch stitch on the sewing machine and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, making sure to use fingers to push that roll away from the seam as we only want to catch the two layers in the seam and we don't want any of that roll getting stuck in there. I'm using my fingers the whole way down to feel and make sure that it's all in place and anytime I'm unsure, my fingers reach in between those layers to just push away and make sure of that. And 
and again reach in from the front bodice side to pull everything right sides out. And voila, you've got two beautiful shoulder seams finished using the burrito roll method. Was that your first time? It was pretty easy, wasn't it? For the crossover back version, we'll pin the two back pieces to the shoulder seams of the front bodice piece, just like so. Make sure you've aligned them so that the straps go across the body and the straight edge is toward the middle. Pin the shoulder seams of the shelf bra in the same way, aligning those shoulder edges and with the straps going across the body and the smaller straight edge facing in toward the center. Stitch these seams using a serger or stretch stitch on your sewing machine. I like using the triple straight stitch on these seams as it leaves a flat and sturdy seam that can be pressed open to create a nice flat shoulder. Now lay your bodice piece right side up on the table. You'll have your front and your back attached at the shoulder seam. Take the shelf bra piece and lay it on top with right sides facing each other. Line up all of the edges, including the shoulder seams, and pin in place. to press the seams of the shoulders open so that it makes a flatter shoulder seam and this is where that triple straight stitch comes into play. You can really have a nice flat shoulder when you use that stitch. Watch out for pesky kittens and when they start trying to eat your clips it's probably a good time to move them out of the way. Now you'll stitch all three of those long curved seams using a serger or stretch stitch on your sewing machine and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Stitch right off at the edge of that curve and do not stitch the side seam with the F notches. We're also not stitching that center back seam.
bring it over to the table and you can see that the neck seam and the shoulder seams are all stitched up. Use a safety pin or other turning tool of choice to bring everything right sides out. Once everything is right side out, just use your fingers to straighten it and flatten those shoulder seams. We'll be working with these flat edges here, which are the center of the back piece. Make sure everything is nice and flattened out and all the seams are pressed out with your fingers. Making sure that all the right sides are up, you're going to take one back piece and cross it over the other back piece so that the two flat edges of the center are right next to each other. Open it up so that the shelf bra piece is facing right side up as well. Take the back piece that's on top and flip it over so that the raw edges of the center back are aligned. Pin the entire center back all the way through the seam and to the bottom edge of the shelf bra. Stitch that center back using a serger or stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Now you've stitched the front and back bodice for the crossover version and here is what it looks like from the outside of the back. You may want to take it over to your table and lay it all out and then slowly get everything set up so that the crisscross is correct and that the back is laying flat. Don't panic if you have a bit of trouble doing it. I did myself and I thought I had stitched something wrong, but all I needed to do was just take a moment to lay it out and then get the crisscross correct. You'll do fine. And here's what the shelf bra back looks like on the inside. Take your two skirt pieces to the table and lay them with right sides together, aligning those two straight edges on the side. Match up the raw edges and the notches labeled C on both skirt pieces.
stitch using a serger or stretch stitch on your sewing machine. The steps for attaching the bodice are the same regardless of which back you're using. I will be showing the U back or straight straps version, but you'll follow these same exact steps for the crossover back. Lay your skirt with the front side facing up and inside out. Make a note of the G notches and also the E notches This step will be attaching the bottom of the front main bodice to the skirt. Slip the bodice inside the skirt straps first so that the bottom of the front bodice is facing upward with right sides touching the front of the skirt. Align the edge of the bodice with the top of the skirt opening. Search for your markings on your bodice. You're going to look for the E notches. Match the E notches on the skirt with the E notch on the bodice and attach them with pins right sides together. Now find the G notches on the skirt and the two seams on the bottom of the front bodice. Line up those raw edges and attach with more pins. Now you can see we have pinned the front of the skirt and just a little bit past the side seam to attach the front bodice. Here's what it looks like from the back and you can see that I've pinned a little ways towards the back just up to those points. We'll take it over to the serger or sewing machine and use our serger or stretch stitch to stitch up this seam. We'll begin our stitch right here at this edge and stitch straight down that line. To attach the back bodice to the skirt, we'll begin by laying the skirt with the wrong side out and the back side facing up. Here you can see the open area that's not attached yet. 
the bodice is currently pulled up and out. Here you can see the right side of the back bodice is facing upward. And this is the curve where we'll be attaching that back bodice. See these edges here? This is the shelf bra and we'll be attaching to that as well. So these pieces will be in play in these upcoming steps. If you haven't already, make sure to mark the center back of your skirt. Make sure those notches are marked and that you can read the labels on both the back bodice and on the shelf bra back bodice. Flip the back bodice down so that the curve matches the curve in the skirt and match the center of the back bodice with the center of the skirt. We're going to pull these so that they are right sides together and pin. Now we'll find the D notch of the back bodice and the D notch of the side panel. Match those up right sides together and pin. Repeat for the other side. Next we'll find the F notches on the shelf bra. Line those up right sides together and pin and repeat for the other side. Pin the bottom edges of the shelf bra with right sides together. And finally, we'll add additional pins to this curved seam as needed. Head on over to your serger or sewing machine and stitch this long U-shaped seam with a serger or stretch stitch, such as a zigzag or lightning bolt stitch. Now the front and back bodice are completely attached to the skirt and the shelf bra is constructed. The final step in constructing your shelf bra is to add underbust elastic. Take your piece of elastic and you are going to form it into a loop by overlapping the ends about a half inch to one inch. Stitch in the shape of an X to close the loop.
Divide your elastic loop into four equal sections. Divide the bottom of your shelf bra into four equal sections. If you haven't already, mark the center front and the center back of the shelf bra. Then match up those two points to find the other two quarter points of the bottom of the shelf bra. Match up the quarter points of the elastic with the quarter points of the shelf bra and pin the elastic to the wrong side of the shelf bra. You want to pin it to the side that has the seams. Use a zigzag stitch to attach the elastic to the bottom edge of the shelf bra. You will need to stretch the elastic just a little bit, but just be careful that you don't stretch the shelf bra. Once you've attached the elastic, you'll fold it up one time and this will encase the elastic inside two layers of the shelf bra. Stitch it again to lock it in place. And you're done! Go forth and enjoy your new courtside dress.